the new Jimquisition lectern is here. It's, well, it's not here, here. It's in the other room. I've not built it yet. Uh, there was an incident about ten days ago in which I tried to carry three industrial sacks full of old electronics and rubbishy bits and messed that up. So I'm on quite a few sort of painkillers and muscle relaxers and everything as I speak. Uh, and as soon as I'm back in, uh, well, you know, what qualifies as... as ship shape for Jim Sterling, uh, I'll get that built and, and that'll be good. Also, if you've been sending me pogs and paying me to masturbate on them and send them back to you, uh, don't worry, your order is coming just as soon as I'm able to start doing that again. Um, I'm only joking about that. But I am open to offers. This past week, Square Enix announced that, for the second time, the nature of its upcoming Hitman game had changed and would now be released episodically. After removing the initial game from the PlayStation Store as well as cancelling current pre-orders, Square Enix revealed the new plan for Hitman, a game in installments, with the March 11th release giving us just a prologue mission and the environment of Paris for $15. Further installments will cost 10 buck a pop, or you can splurge on the season pass for $50, giving you the full experience eventually. Cause it's the AAA game industry and you've got to have a season pass now, for fuck's sake. There's been public outcry for this new plan, not least for the fact this news comes after a disastrous pre-launch mess when it comes to Square Enix trying to find a way to sell Hitman to us that isn't just selling Hitman to us. It was initially announced with intro packs and upgrade fees and all this kind of bollocks. In any case, Square Enix has been trying to find a way to sell this game to us piecemeal, something that has annoyed people the world over. However, if you're a long-term viewer of the Jimquisition, this news should not surprise you, because you'd have seen it coming. You'd have seen it coming because I told you this would happen. I told you years ago. Let's look at what I said two whole years back. Without naming names, I can tell you I know conversations are being had in the bowels of one particular publisher that may or may not have made that piece of shit all the bravest about breaking games into bits and pieces and selling off incomplete experiences as a way to make money off gamers before the game itself is even finished. Buy some of the features now, pay for others when we finish making them. That's being talked about. All kinds of weird and desperate conversations are being had in boardrooms as audience growth stagnates but executives want to keep making more cash and keep finding ways to just dip from the same well and break games up and sell them off bit by bit and just fleece two sheep's worth of wool from one sheep. The seeds of my words bore fruit when we found out that Final Fantasy VII Remake would be produced and sold in part rather than released as a full title. And this new stuff with Hitman has only confirmed to me that what I heard in 2013 was bang on the money. When I was told that Square Enix was trying desperately to monetize its own development by selling you games while they were still being made. Kind of like early access, except you buy chunks of finished content rather than a whole unfinished package. Knowing now that my sources were correct, now that we're finally seeing the results of those conversations had years prior, I went back to those sources to see if I could find more out. Oh, and I did. I found out exactly why Square Enix is carving its games to pieces, why the first few years of this console generation have been weird, and why we should keep a very close eye on how AAA publishers behave in the next few years. So let's start with Hitman. I've been told the game was going to be an online-only experience at first. See, at the very end of the last generation, Square Enix and uh, apparently other major publishers had no faith in consoles. We were wrapping up a very long generation, audiences were stagnating, and companies were worried. My sources tell me that publishers were convinced prior to the launch of the PS4 and Xbox One that consoles were done. Free to play games, mobile games, and ironically after giving it no support, the PC were considered the future. Nobody wanted to invest in new intellectual property and Square Enix especially wanted to make its old IP online only experiences, expecting microtransactions and piecemeal episodic content to be the only way to go. It's no coincidence that Squenix and other companies put out so many HD remasters at the start of this generation. Such games as Tomb Raider, Sleeping Dogs, Resident Evil, Dishonored, Devil May Cry. There's been tons of PS4 and Xbox One re-releases since the gen launched. This is the result of publishers having no faith in consoles because sales were down toward the end of the last generation. You know, as they would be. Employees in the companies that dealt directly with the community tried to tell the higher-ups that customers were just tired of a long generation, were saving their money for the next gen, and that consoles still had life. But, Apparently, they were ignored. One victim of this ignorance was Just Cause 3, 
Like Hitman, Just Cause 3 was planned to be an online-only multiplayer experience, released only for PC and containing no single player. The game's been criticised for its lacklustre campaign and overall buggy quality, but I'm told Avalanche actually did an impressive damn job to even get it as good as it is, because Square Enix kept changing its minds during development and making demands of the studio. The entire story campaign had to be crammed into what was originally an online-only experience. So if you ever thought JC3 was a little bit odd, a little bit off, now you know why. And this is what Square Enix wanted for all its games, because it had no faith in single-player experiences, no faith in traditional $60 games. It's why it's been acting so confused with all of its weird ideas, like, you know, the augment your pre-order stuff. They're just throwing shit out there in a desperate bit. Oh yeah, talking of Deus Ex, I've even heard that Deus Ex Mankind Divided is itself divided, that it was going to be a bigger game than it will be, and it has instead been altered to be a Mass Effect style trilogy with a similar structure to Bioware's sci-fi series. Now that info I have is uh, a little outdated and, with Square Enix changing its mind on the flip of a coin, we'll keep an eye on that and see if that bears fruit too. That's all besides the point. The point is that Square Enix and, I'm told, other companies had a terrible strategy heading from one generation to the next. They all wanted to copy games like World of Tanks or Warframe. They were panicking that the next gen would be a flop, wouldn't listen to their community liaisons telling them customers were just tired of the PS3 and 360. Kind of ironic considering this generation started with re-releases of 360 and PS3 games. Square Enix allegedly cancelled several games we don't know about due to this panic and constantly meddled with games like Deus Ex Just Cause 3 and Hitman. What the AAA industry did not expect, however, was The Witcher 3 and Fallout 4. These games selling gangbusters and proving the abundance of customers who want full traditional console games. What they did not expect was the PlayStation 4 becoming a smash hit console and the Xbox One doing, you know, pretty well. Oh my god! After ignoring what their employees had told them, executives were blindsided by the success of this current generation. They weren't ready for it, which is why the first few years have had so many re-releases, and why we're now seeing the results of Square Enix's years-long panic in games like Hitman. Too late to stop it now, the game's been carved up too much by this point. There's good news in this long term. Obviously publishers do now know that this generation at least is a safe bet, and I've been told to expect publishers to be a bit more confident with investments in new IP and full-fledged console games going forward. With games from CD Projekt Red and Bethesda doing well, the fates come back, which is a good thing. On the flip side, however, we do still have these carved games yet to come, and their success may determine whether or not we'll see more of them in future. If Hitman's episodic experiment turns out to make Squenix more money, then we may still see yet more previously $60 premium experiences go the same way. The guaranteed success of Final Fantasy VII, whether it's episodic or not, will doubtless leave Square Weblix convinced that carved experiences do well. So while faith is restored in full-fledged premium games, we may see a lot of carved up alternatives released alongside them too. I mean, Life is Strange did very well for Squabloxes, and we can expect more episodic experiments over the next few years. At any rate, now you know why this generation started the way it did, why Square Enix has carved its games into pieces, and why publishers should really fucking pay attention to their communities more. As for what happens going forward, well that's going to be decided by the market. It's an exciting and worrying and promising and unsettling time, and I can't wait to see how it plays out. Oh my god! Before we sign off, I do have a bone to pick with Square Enix and Hitman. You see, they just announced recently their Collector's Edition, because obviously they've got a Collector's Edition, and in that Collector's Edition is an iconic red tie. Agent 47's iconic red tie. Let me tell you something, chumps. There's only one iconic red tie in the video game world, and they're right between these lovely tits! So thank God for me. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, for some reason last week I said that uh, Namco Bandai owned Bomberman. Um, that, that wasn't, it was uh, Hudson Soft, so fuck that up. <laughs>